Mad Max, Knight Rider, Batman, we all love the bond between a badass and his car. And there's nothing more thrilling than watching him tearing up the road as he chases down the bad guys with his motor fueled by movie magic and the power of family. But as wild and decked out as these cars are, the real thing leaves them in the dust. During one of the worst conflicts of the 20th century, civilians suffered beyond belief, with no hope for salvation. Until their own badass with a badass car came along. A guardian angel who would appear out of nowhere with life-saving supplies and then vanish just as quickly as he'd appeared. A beast that blasts through ambushes like it's a trip to the shops. A shadow on the road that the bad guys couldn't track down no matter how hard they tried. A man on one hell of a mission with one hell of a vehicle. Helge Meyer and the ghost car. Please leave a like and a comment on this video because it really helps me in the algorithm. <coughs> but before we get into the mad lad, this video was brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an easy to use learning community with hundreds of different classes to master or improve your skills. Whether you are a beginner or not, there is always something new for you to learn. Skillshare can help you learn, grow and connect through knowledge and creativity. There is always something new to learn with Skillshare and who doesn't want to get a few new skills under their belt? I've been playing an ongoing D&D campaign with friends recently and I thought it might be handy for me to learn how to design some dungeon maps ready for future adventures. So I found a class by Ted Fouster, helpfully named How to Draw Old School Dungeon Maps, which has been very useful and also it's pretty nostalgic. So the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description down below will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So the link is down below and click the link. In 1992 Yugoslavia collapsed, Slovenia and Croatia seceded and the latter took almost all of the Mediterranean coast, leaving the people of the brand new nation of Bosnia and Herzegovina without a nice beach. Now, if that was the only teething issue that Bosnia and Herzegovina had, then things would be great, as long as the place had its shit together. The only problem was, it did not have its shit together. Like, like, at all. The people of this new country couldn't exactly agree on what to do next. And, in true Yugoslavian fashion, the people were split along ethnic lines. The Bosniaks and Croats, supported by Croatia, wanted their new independent country to stay as it was. The Serbs wanted to rejoin the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, and the Bosniaks wanted to stop being genocided. So, naturally, no one really agreed. So, they all settled their differences in the most Eastern European way possible. Race war. <laughs> Specifically, the Bosnian war. Now, I want everyone to know that a lot of people from the Balkan states watch this channel. And I have just mentioned a Balkan conflict. I want everyone to be very, very careful when venturing into the comments because it's, it's going to be a shitstorm. However, there was some agreement on the genocide part. Unfortunately, this only meant that there was a lot more genocide. There was, there was so much fucking genocide happening. And then, to make matters even worse, the alliance between the Bosniaks and Croatia collapsed, and they started fighting each other a year into the Bosnian War. 
in a conflict known as the Croat Bosniak War. The, Bo the Bosniaks were fighting a war within a war. <laughs> because Balkans. So, after more than three years of fighting, war crimes, ethnic cleansing, and a plethora of other atrocities, which the mere mention of would get me demonetised, the Bosnian War ultimately ended in a stalemate. Because... God forbid that this doesn't end up being a complete waste of time, lives and resources. But while no one really won, someone absolutely lost. The civilians that were caught in the middle of it all. The Bosnian War left over 100,000 people dead and around a third of them were Bosniak civilians. Over 2 million people were also forced to flee from their homes during the conflict. Needless to say, the situation was beyond dire and help was desperately needed. The displaced civilians were left with basically nothing and they were desperate for food, clothes, medicine, you know, all the things you need to live. And the UN responded to their cries for help by sending out trucks to distribute supplies. I mean, look at that, the UN doing something. They didn't really... Do much about the literal genocide, but you know, better, better late than never. Unfortunately, this achieved very little because very few of the trucks actually made it to their destinations. Most of them were intercepted by pirates or combatants that had an interest in letting the Bosniaks starve to death. But do not worry, do not worry, do not fret. The UN took this problem very seriously and they responded in the most UN way possible. They gave up. They just, they just, they gave up. They just stopped sending the trucks and instead of redoubling their efforts to get the Bosniaks the help that they so desperately needed, they just stopped sending out supplies. But don't, but don't worry, don't worry. This was actually a genius plan. The bad guys can't attack aid trucks if there are no aid trucks. And the bad guys can't genocide civilians if there are no civilians left for them to genocide. So mission accomplished, boys. The UN managed to prevent a war crime by letting civilians starve to death. So the West had given up on the Bosniaks and the starving civilians were left to their fate. But... In their darkest hour, when all hope was lost, God sent a guardian angel to their rescue. Helge Meyer. Helge Meyer is a literal good Christian soldier who served with the Jaeger Corps in the Danish Special Forces and also trained in guerrilla warfare with the American Green Berets. So, having served with the best of the best, the man knows what he's doing. But, by this point, he was happily retired. But, you know how the old cliché goes, the elite soldier has been through hell and back and he's retired now and he's living out in the woods in the little cabin that he built for himself and he's chopping wood one day and his old sergeant comes up to him and goes, How long's it been, Jim? F Fifteen years? Need you, back need you back in the game, Jim? And he's like, I don't, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> But, but of course, he, he hears a call. <laughs> what, what a bunch of bullshit. Uh, he hears a call that he just can't ignore. Helge saw the plight of the Bosnian people and he knew that he had the right set of skills needed to make a difference. God was sending him back into the game for one more mission. Helge was going to transport those supplies. However, he couldn't do it alone. So... He sought help, but unfortunately, all of the European countries refused the call to action. So, Helge sought out the help of the USA, and it turned out that the US Army and Air Force were more than eager to upgrade the vehicle that Helge had procured for the job. So, what did he use? Did Helge manage to get a Humvee, or did he learn from the chads and go for a trusty Toyota Hilux? Nope, that would be too boring. If Helge was going to do this, he was going to do it in style. He got a second generation 1976 
Chevy Camaro. Helge brought the Camaro to the US-owned Rheinman Air Base in Germany and the American engineers got to work. The car was stripped down and then armoured with steel and Kevlar plates and the side and back windows were replaced with steel panels for extra protection. And to make up for the loss of visibility, they added a thermal imaging kit and infrared night vision for when Helge couldn't drive with the lights on. And to make the car look even more awesome, they also added a big blade to the front, which was also there to clear debris and landmines. The tyres were also upgraded so that they could run while flat, and a ground-to-air radio was added to coordinate air support when needed. Most importantly, the car needed to be fast. So its 5.7-litre V8 engine was tuned from 185 horsepower to 220. Now this doesn't sound like a massive upgrade, but they gave Helge a little something extra for when things went sideways. Nitrous. Helge was able to nitro boost his car to 440 horsepower. Even when fully encumbered, the car could go from zero to 120 miles per hour in under 13 seconds. And that is fucking nuts when you consider the fact that it was a 76 and it was carrying 400 kilograms worth of supplies. This Camaro was an absolute beast that makes Bumblebee look like a little bitch and no stone was left unturned in its creation. Not even the paint job. The car was painted with a military grade matte black that was so dark it even absorbed radar and its thermal signature. The car wasn't just good at stealth, in a technical sense, it was essentially invisible. After all of the upgrades were prepared and a rubber ducky was put in the grill, the ghost car was ready. And so was Helge who had some gear of his own. Some charitable Americans had raised $12,000 for Helgi's mission, which was spent on supplies to distribute to the needy and a Kevlar jacket and helmet, because, you know, safety first. Now, you may have noticed a lack of weaponry in the car's impressive loadout, and the same applied to Helgi, who didn't carry a gun. Not just because he is a man of God, but after years in the armed forces, Helgi knew that the best way to win a fight was to not get into one in the first place. After all, he wasn't here to fight, he was here to deliver supplies. So, Helgi refused to have a gun, because he felt he just didn't need one. Now, I know that pacifism tends to be kind of cringe, especially when you're in situations like Helgi's. It's a fucking excellent way to get bloody killed. But you do have to admit that there is nothing cooler than ending an intense car chase by hitting the nitrous button and blasting off into the night. With a vehicle that insane, it is no wonder that Helgi insisted that his Bible was the only weapon that he needed. With the car upgraded, filled up, and the supplies packed, Helge lit up a cigarette, started the engine, and off he went. Over the next three years, Helge carried out over a hundred supply runs and dominated the war-torn streets, delivering aid to the most vulnerable parts of the country under the cover of night. As expected, Helge would often find himself pursued by an assortment of ne'er-do-wells, but he was always able to outrun the hail of bullets with a combination of fast and furious-esque driving skills and perfectly timed nitro boosts. Over time, Helge got so good at planning his routes that he was often tearing up the back roads completely uninterrupted, and his Reputation for carrying a Bible instead of a firearm earned him the nickname God's Rambo. And his religiousness wasn't even the most wholesome thing about him. Helgi's biggest motivation for carrying out his mission 
was to help out children. So he always changed out of his Kevlar gear and into casual clothes whenever he arrived at a drop site so that he wouldn't freak the children out and panic them while he was handing out supplies. Now, it's all well and good talking about how great the car is, but that wouldn't have meant anything if the driver wasn't just as impressive as his vehicle. After all, Helge was able to make this intense game of cat and mouse look more like Tom and Jerry. Helge was extremely highly trained and very few others would have had the skills or the spiritual fortitude needed to survive in the utter hell that was Bosnia at that time. The man... The man was just built different. However, while Helge was on a mission from God, he was still human. The stakes were extremely high every time he went out on a supply run. And Helge had to have his wits about him at all times because I cannot understate just how dangerous his mission was. While the car provided a lot of protection from small arms fire, it wasn't perfect. On one occasion, a sniper's bullet penetrated the steel plate and hit Helge in the head. And by a massive stroke of luck, his Kevlar helmet had saved his life. But ultimately, it was all worth it because of the difference that Helge made in the lives of those he delivered supplies to. Helge himself recounted seeing the effects of his actions firsthand in 1994, when he came across human heat signatures inside a ruined building in the city of Vares. He saw candlelight that was very quickly extinguished when he knocked on the door. Helge then knocked again as he said, Mr. Mayor, US Army. And he was invited in by an old man who was accompanied by a young woman and her newborn baby. All three of them were dirty and malnourished. So Helge gave them soap, food, water, and most importantly, baby food. Once everyone was cleaned up and fed, they sat together for a while. The old man reading his Quran while Helge read his Bible. Helge undoubtedly saved many lives through his actions, as well as providing hope and making survival that little bit easier for those he came across. And the fact that he did this after some of the wealthiest and most powerful European countries completely gave up makes it even more incredible. The man did more with a muscle car, donations, willpower and faith than the entire fucking UN did. Private Enterprise saves the day yet again. After the Bosnian War ended, Helge went back into retirement and he now lives in Germany with his wife and, of course, his car, calling the latter his warhorse. With over 100,000 kilometres on the clock and a new orange paint job, he still drives it to this day and he takes it to car shows every now and again. Although... His wife apparently hates it, which I understand. My wife also really hates my truck because her fucking short ass can't climb up into it, but it's funny as fuck watching her try. Helge has also written a book about his experience titled Gotti's Rambo, which is fantastic. It's really good for me. I love it when mad lads write autobiographies because it makes writing these videos so much easier until we discovered that his book is only available in German or Danish. Please publish it in a real language. Overall, Helge Meyer and the Ghost Camaro, 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 I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Quite frankly, I don't really care. It's late at night. This isn't just the story of a badass vet with his equally badass ride doing some sick donuts around genocidal war criminals. This is the story of a man who saw that it was in his power to help some people, which is something that we can all aspire to do. As Helge said himself, you don't have to drive into a war zone in a Camaro filled with medicine and toys for children. I could do that because I had military training and my special connections. It's about helping out on a daily basis down to the smallest thing. 
we can all do something to help others. Now, you may not be able to travel into war-torn areas and visit children in the night with an iconic vehicle full of gifts and the spirit of Jesus like a fucking Balkan Santa, but you can still play your own part to make a difference. But while Helge saved many lives and set a great example for all of us, he doesn't actually want to be thought of as a hero, but as someone who wanted to help children. Well, tough shit and I'm sorry Helge, but I'm going to call you a hero anyway, because an absolute legend putting themselves in great danger to help children and the vulnerable is exactly what a hero is. Thank you for your service. It's Count Dankula on YouTube! Everybody subscribe!